pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Garza, roll call, please. Yes. Chairman Williams. Here. Vice Chairwoman Kiefer. Here. Mr. Albrecht. Here. Mr. DeMaria. Here. Mr. O'Hanley. Here. Mrs. Seberg. Here. Mrs. Williams. Here. Mr. Morales. Here. Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Are there any additions or corrections to the agenda? There are to the personnel consent agenda, ratification of personnel. Thank you. And now while you're all here, I'm assuming it's not the CS, <laughs> <laughs> uh, superintendent spotlights. Thank you, Chairman Williams. Uh, good evening to all school board members, and certainly good evening to all of our parents and family members, our great students that are here tonight. Uh, we do have an exciting moment um, that we are very honored and privileged to present to you tonight. Uh, each year, the Virginia School Board Association uh, honors our school board members across the state uh, through School Board Appreciation Month in the month of February. And so we have asked all of our students at our, our various schools uh, to come and share some presentations with you. This year's theme for the VSPA um, month is uh, Advancing Opportunities for All. And so we know that the hard work that you all do as board members uh, through budgeting and, and policies and regulations on behalf of students is so that you can advance those opportunities for them uh, through various programs and things that are offered at every school. So some of them are here tonight to spotlight some of the programs uh, that are featured in their buildings and we have some great students here to present those things to you. I would like for uh, as many as will at the conclusion to remain for a picture with our school board members. Uh, we do like to share that information with the BSBA so they know that we have participated in this in, uh, in our district. But um, I'm hoping that those of you that know will remain with us so that we can do that at the end. So we're going to start off tonight with Beans Elementary School. Going to ask Mr. Walker 
um, to join me in sharing her perspective as a math teacher. These are two of our beautiful CAD students, and they have prepared the gift for you today, which was the kitty room. All right, so as you can see, we have uh, three different types. Type one, which is the exposure, which is um, when we get information about a new topic, we expose the students to new ideas. That's when we have videos, we have speakers, I like to say the word to say it. After that, we have our type two group training, which is uh, when we actually teach them the different trades that go along with the tag that we actually have. And type three is when the students work to produce a product, a service, or a performance on a common interest. So as you can see, our type one exposure uh, was Miss Navarro. She is actually uh, part of the CERN uh, that's in Bristol County. She was our authentic speaker. She taught the students various ways to help the community. And this uh, really sparked a fire in our students. After the visit, the students came up with many ways to help our community. Um, our type two is a group training. My co-teacher, Ms. Kelly, and myself, we taught our students different things about the community, what is a community, and actually the different people in our community that help us, and different ways that they can help the community. And as you can see, our type three, we were teaching, investigating, and solving. The students knew that Valentine's Day was coming up, so they had a discussion on possible ways to raise money. And they, by themselves, generated the Candy Graham fundraiser idea. Um, this type of authentic self-driven learning is what we encourage at means. At means, um, we work on growing next level learners that they could be the self problems. So, we were going to have our students, you know, present our Candy Grams to you, but we won't have them. So, I want to thank Elena and Josh for being a part of our community. Mr. Scott Baldwin, go <laughs> Good evening, Chairman uh, Williams, Dr. Ward, members of the school board. I'm not going to stand up here and um, talk to you. I do want to. I do want to thank you myself personally for your support because um, you know it's all about the kids, and uh, I feel like we have that support from you guys so that we can make it all about the kids. So, thank you very much for allowing uh, opportunities for not only just our students but also for our teachers and us administrators as well uh, to continue to learn and grow. So, I'm going to turn it over to some of my friends behind me. You notice there is a. a a bigger, taller friend in the back. And not much taller. Not much. <laughs> but she'll explain why she's here, not her daughter. But I'm going to turn it over to my friends here. So, go ahead. Good evening. My name is Cecil Quillan, and I'm in fourth grade at Round Elementary. Two years ago, my family and I moved from Puerto Rico. I started at Round Elementary in 2015. At the beginning, it was difficult because my first language is Spanish, and I have some medical issues with my stomach. By the years, I've got better and better because I receive all the help from now to be a good person and student. This has shift that my grades were good at the point that I have been several times of the honor roll. When I started, when I started first grade, I got opp the opportunity to get in chorus. I wanted it because I love singing. Being part of the chorus teach me how to be confident of myself. Also, I learned how correctly I have to use my voice, work together with my group, show me the way that we can work hard with dedication, passion, and discipline, making in us a great experience in our life. It was a great experience singing in the Christmas concert in my school. Also, I cannot explain how amazing and wonderful I felt in the Old City Chorus Concert in the Houghton Performing Arts Center. I want to say thank you to my music teacher, Ms. Drummond, because her dedication and effort has been achieved us responsible and commit ourselves every day to be, a better, to be better students and achieve our dreams in chorus. I want to say thank you to all my teachers and staff from round, but in special to Mr. Baldwin, Ms. Robinson, Ms. Lily, and the nurse Ms. Lily McLaren for helping me too many times when I had problems with my stomach. 
I'm so blessed to have the best parents ever. They supported me when I wanted to enter in chorus, and they have always been with, with me in every dream and goal I, that I have wished. Thank you, Mom and Dad. I love you. In closing, I want to thank Round Elementary School for their support, making my life so grateful and blessed to be part of this great school. Thank you for your attention. God bless you all. Good evening. My name is Justin Ward, and I'm a fourth grader at Round Elementary School. I'm representing basketball and soccer. One of the best parts of being a member of that, those activities were making friends, having fun, and working as a team. I've learned how to be a part of a team, and I like no matter how good you are, you always get to play. There's no MVPs or number ones. We always play, and it's great. I just want to thank all the teachers who help with the activities. <coughs> Good evening, my name is Bobby Hannafin and I am a fourth grader at Round Elementary School. I am representing an after school club called Rocky Rangers, which is a fun club that we can learn how to solve hard math problems and read better. I appreciate the fact that there is at least one club that you can learn reading and math to get a better education. As a student at George C. Round, I am well educated in math and reading. I would like to say that this is a very cool opportunity in a kid's life and I would like to thank Mr. Baldwin for giving me this opportunity. Good evening, my name is Pavel Larios Lopez, and I am a fourth grader at Round Elementary School. I am representing the SEA, and I am also the SEA president. The best part of being a member of the SEA is how I get to be involved in projects and, be, and get to be helpful to others, and I have so much fun. I've, got, I've gained confidence and strength throughout the school year. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Liliana Flores and I am a fourth grader at Round Elementary School. I am representing my school by being in the bus patrol. I think being a member of Round's bus patrol is a great honor because I help students stay safe. I have grown as a student by helping other kids and learned how to protect them. I am responsible for other students. My job is for them to feel safe when getting on and off the bus. I am the oldest of five, and some of them go to round. I watch out for everyone as if they were my little brothers and sisters. I feel I am a great role model for all students and feel happy when kindergarten and pre k year look up to me. I love being a bus patrol. Good evening. My name is Sophia Wetzel. I am a first grader and I am representing Art Club. In Art Club we do fun activities. The best part this year was making painted rocks, quills, and a dragon for Chinese New Year. I have grown by knowing more art. I have learned to appreciate art and the beautifulness of art. I love if everyone to be able to join Art Club for the experience and opportunities to discover their abilities. Thank you. Hello, 
Hello. Clearly, I'm not a fourth grader at round. Um, I am here to talk about my daughter. My daughter's name is Addison Wilson, and she is in their self-contained special needs program. My favorite part about that program is how they continue to keep her mainstreamed. We can be out at a store. She's nonverbal. And people be like, hey, Addie. Hey, Addie. Hey, Addie. And I'm like, how do you know her? She doesn't talk to you. She's mainstreamed for art, library, PE, and all the other specials. So they make a point to make our special needs kids a really important part of their school system. And that is important to me as a mom. So thank you. So on, on behalf of everybody at Round, uh, we gave you a little, a little treat in front of all of you to uh, get you through the evening, a little sweets, um, but also something um, to kind of symbolize helping our students and grow. Um, uh, so I guess you don't need too much talent to keep those things alive from what my wife told me. So, um, <laughs> so enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Round. Next, we will hear from Hayden Elementary School, Dr. Wilder. Good evening, Chairman Williams, Dr. McGorick, and the board. I'm so glad to be here, but it's not about me, as similar to what Mr. Baldwin had said. It's about the great opportunities that you've provided to me to lead Hayden and provide some of the amazing opportunities we have, including our Spanish dual language program. But I can't say it as well as the kids can. And then we have a video for you. Where's Lee? Is she? So is the video going to be? Not yet. So when it's ready, then we'll press play. Is it you, Ms. Garza? <laughs> okay. So yeah, I think not yet. Okay. Not yet. All right. So without further ado, we've got some. My name is Carlos. We are here to with you our video that showcases our school. Hayden has many opportunities for students to grow and learn. These opportunities are made possible because of our supportive school board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice and Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We played it several times, sorry about that. I don't know what happened to it. They were all very nervous, but I think they did a great job. Are they left side? <laughs> but they are all patrols. Keeping, that's okay, keeping our students safe in the hallways, on the buses, and uh, being a good role model. There they are. But one of the things you'll see is some snapshots of our Spanish dual language, so you can hear it in action which is always more powerful than, than sometimes just talking about it. Well, it was great there. technology. Yes, it yeah. was. I, we listened to it just before the meeting started. I'm sorry, I see. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It's going to create a lot of suspense. <laughs> Okay. Sorry. Okay. Well. Okay. Hmm. 
I know. That was the original. I know. But I'm going to cross my fingers. I promise it was right. a lovely presentation. I saw it. <laughs> well, it's going on our website. I wasn't going to put it on our website until after we presented it to you. Um, but basically, it's about a three and a half minute video showcasing the different opportunities and things. Um, so you can see the picture right there. This is. It's going to be on the website, um, and so and I'll send you all the link tomorrow to thank you for all the great things and opportunities that you've given us, and we'll just make do with technology. So, thanks. Okay, so next we have Dean Elementary School. Good evening, Chairman Williams, Dr. McCork. Uh, we want to thank you all for this opportunity. Last year, we had a STEAM night, and we had over 500 participants. And that has been very important to us because our parent engagement is really increasing. So we have some student producers I want to thank tonight. Our student producers are Melia Hart, Berlin Gonzalez, Kendall Wilkie, and Shayna Schaubert. These are our student producers bringing this to you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We wish to introduce you to Miss Jenny D. She was a lady who saw a need for African American students to have an education, a fierce and young girl. She raised the money and started a school for them. Here she is, larger than life, but not larger than her own. Did you know she took students on a field trip to see Franklin D. Roosevelt, February 14, 1906? Now that's a field trip. Here she is in our hall, in our school for everyone to see in our halls. Our, our teacher, Mrs. Hash, headed this beautiful project, but not just any project, but a steam project. The science behind this project began as students studied lines and slopes and nature to be inspired by what they wanted to choose. As they painted the individual points, some parts looked like fern, box, and sand chips. Thinking of technology, this painting of Miss Jenny D draws a start comparison to the pixelated art used by computer images. Students were able to see and compare how many other how many other forms of art use the pixelated format? Format. Think how you would look in this pixelated form. Yeah, to engineer this whole project, all 378 pieces have to have to be coordinated with an image and an, and and then by number. Not an easy task, but it required matching, repetition, and patience. Although it seemed like a puzzle, Mrs. Hash and the students knew that the outcome would be a great one. This picture of Miss Jenny Bean is a picture that takes on the kind of art that Chuck Close uses. Art scale pictures. Chuck closes would take a picture and scale it like a grid and find paint colors that match the squares. This is the way Mrs. Hash had us work on this project like a real life artist. This project used 378 5x5 pieces of squares where students had to determine how many pieces would be needed. There are 21 down and 18 across. Now that was a lot of work for you. This project was done with families during the STEAM night and also during classes. We are proud to have this way Miss Jenny Dean and our hallway as her legacy continues and she continues to teach us.
We would like to present our guitars to you as symbols of advancing opportunities for all. And we'd also like to give you a mug on behalf of Jenny Dean. Dr. Wilder, I think you are still in the house. I think we might have success here, so we want to be able to share what your students have put together. Technology was a little finicky there, but you can see you've already had four examples of the tremendous opportunities our students have in our school building. So I'm just so excited that we have a few more. And so we thank you for your patience as they share some of these spotlights. So next we will have Baldwin Elementary School. Can 
Can I start? Good evening, Dr. McGorick, Chairman Williams, members of the school board. It is my pleasure to stand here as the principal of Baldwin Elementary School and introduce to you our Fly Girls, Baldwin Fly Girls, the future leading young girls club. They are going to tell you tonight about how you're providing opportunities, we're providing opportunities for them to learn to lead in our school building. I'm joined tonight also by Ms. Heather Ramey, and she is our school counselor, and under her careful guidance, uh, they have developed this program for you. My name is Ludi. We are future leading young girls at Bottom Elementary. We promote leadership, positive self-image, and positive self-esteem. We are confident, loud, and proud. We learn to do the right thing even when no one is looking, and that is it's not what you wear, it's how you wear it. My name is Ella. We are the students to introduce our new classmates to Baldwin. On their first day, we take them on a short tour of the school, answer questions they may have, and help make them feel com co more comfortable. We are proud. My name is Karime. We are, we are proud of our school and we want the new students to feel the same way. Baldwin's Caring Closet provides resources like warm coats and school supplies to help ensure that students are successful in school. We are very fortunate to receive these resources from the community that cares about student achievement. Hi, my name is Precious, and I'm Project Lead the Way is is a program that consists of activities, projects, and problems that help us with our innovative skills. These skills helps us with learning to collaborate and working together as a team. It also teaches us to communicate with others while solving problems and using technology. Thank you for helping us fly. All right, do you want to give our stuff to them? So look at your card. There you go. That's from Mr. Demary. He's right here. The green tie. He'll wave at you. The blue jacket. And this is the seat. We've got Mr. Albrecht. Thank you so much for your support of Baldwin Elementary School. We are very excited to see these girls fly. And now we have the newest Baldwin, which would be Baldwin Intermediate School. Hello, my name is Jordan Sola, and I... Not yet. <laughs> Good evening, Chairman Williams, Vice Chairwoman Kiefer, members of the board, and Dr. McGuirk. Tonight, it gives me great pleasure to bring to you our Baldwin Huskies and our four out of our five movie stars that you will see in a minute, our tireless Miss Kirkland, was behind this video and she's going to share some information at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Greetings from Baldwin Intermediate. On behalf of our staff and our students, we would like to thank, give you thanks for the tremendous effort and time you put into your role as school board members here in Manassas City. Your efforts in establishing both the new Baldwin and Baldwin Intermediate in particular have enriched our lives, both students and teachers. A quick introduction to some of my video stars here. We have Mr. Jordan, Soa Smith, Dimas Ramos, Justine McNeil, 
and Kendra Agueta Morales. That's what I, okay. <laughs> All right, and here is our video for you. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, my name is Jerome Silva, and I am a student of Old River Media. I love the Husky Huddle, honestly. I live here for round, and it's bigger than what I ever thought. I went on a field trip for it. I didn't accept everything, except everything I got. I got the Husky Huddle, we learned stuff. We made crafts during the winter thing. We made snowflakes, which was amazing. I never knew how to do that with hockey buzzers. This was great. The Husky Huddle is one thing I love. because of the wonderful teachers we have. They are caring and the best teachers you could ever find. Teachers do so much for us. It's really like hard to pay them back because they do so much. They help us get into college. They help us with math, science, reading. They also include the students everything, school activities, after school activities, and during class, like me for example. Um, last week, my teacher managed to get me to get me um, to go to Rescue Park on March 2nd, join the book club, and uh, a couple months ago I made me a sit in the mess. <laughs> You know, sometimes I can stand here all day and tell you about the wonderful things, but to hear it from our students and their perspective is priceless. So we have just a few more. Um, next we have Miss um, Kara Mills and her group from Mayfield Intermediate School.
All right, good evening, Chairman Williams, school board members, and Dr. McGork. So it would be so easy for us to come here tonight and tell you how much we love our STEM program at Mayfield, but we thought it would be much cooler to show you guys how much we love our STEM program at Mayfield Intermediate School. So I am going to turn it over right now to STEM teacher extraordinaire David Brungard, and he's going to introduce some really cool students to you guys. So, um, with the demand in the workforce for jobs uh, that require coding and computer program programming, one of the things we like to focus on at Mayfield is exposing all students and allowing all students to have the opportunity to experience some form of coding experience. Um, one of the ways we do that is through the Sphero ro robots. They look like this. And each student was able to write their own program. And uh, they're going to run through it real quick, show you guys what they wrote. And first up, we have. My name is Desiree Brock, and I'll be showing the hot potato program. So you can hit play. Oh, you want more? What she does every time it counts, they throw. And then she programmed it so between three and ten throws, it'll dance and turn red, and that person is essentially out. And uh, it's just like the hot potato game. Next up, we have. Hi, my name is Pamela, and I am going to be programming the spirit ball to act more like a robot, e even if it is a robot. Anyways. Next up we have. Hi, my name is Kate Graham and I'll be showing how our robots can dance. Next up, we have. Hello, my name is Andrea. I'm going to program the robot to the square loop. You should be spinning top, and I'll say you so. <laughs> Sparrow like a talk to change the LED. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up. John, say your name. Hello, my name is Jonathan Wainer, and I'm going to be showing you guys the spinning top. Uh, Jonathan's program has it set to when he spins it to the left, it turns green. And when he spins it to the right, it turns red. And if he spins it faster, the LED light will get brighter in each direction. So the students just want to come up and tell you personally thank you for our STEM program and opportunities in our school. <laughs> And uh, we're sorry for the stretch break you just had there tonight, but I know we can all say that none of us were doing that in fifth and sixth grade. So it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. 
I really like what Dr. Um, Wilder said at the end of the Hayden um, presentation that the future is now. So watching these students program uh, these robots is just simply amazing. And, and as uh, Ms. Mills just said, to know that they're doing this in fifth and sixth grade is just like wow. So next we have Metz Middle School with their presentation. Good evening, Chairman Williams, Dr. McGorick, members of the board. Um, this year, actually, I challenged my staff to contribute to what we call our hashtag Met Story. So we have a video compilation of those pictures over the course of the year with some narration done by our lovely baritone, uh, Tony Staten, our new choral teacher. Metz Middle School provides opportunities for Manassas City 7th and 8th grade students. Teachers at Metz work as a member of a team that consists of a math, science, social studies, English, and a special education teacher. A grade 17 and a grade 18 of teachers work together to create a learning academy. Students spend their time at Metz as a member of the learning academy community. There are five learning academies, each with a unique overarching theme. The five academies are the Environmental Academy, STEM Academy, Innovations and Technology Academy, Global Studies Academy, and the Culture and Humanities Academy. Students on each academy engage in learning activities to master the same Virginia standards of learning. The standards remain the same across the academies, but learning activities and field trips may vary to fit with Met staff value student health and wellness in addition to academic achievement. Every student participates in structured physical activity for fitness throughout the year. In addition to physical education classes during the school day, students can choose to join one of our many athletic teams competing after school against other local middle schools. Met students and coaches pride themselves in achieving success on the athletic field while at all times demonstrating good sportsmanship. We take seriously representing the letters on the front of our jersey in a manner that reflects positively on the city of Manassas. The visual and musical arts are valued equally with every student, beginners to accomplished musicians and artists, being given the choice to find joy and develop a passion for the arts. Our orchestra, band, and choral programs consistently rate excellent among the highest of Northern Virginia middle schools. 55% of our students take advantage of the varied music programs, and 33% of students participate in visual art throughout the school year. Students can participate in programs such as guitar, music technology, drum line, jazz band, both during the school day and after school. We strive to provide the means by which students begin to unlock the door to lifelong passions. After school clubs allow students to make friends with those who have similar interests and explore new activities. Chess club, garden club, cooking club, National Junior Honor Society, drum line, jazz band, Honors Music Society, and Yearbook are a few examples of well-attended activities that keep students connected to school staff and the school community. School day programs that guide students to future career potential and increase 21st century skills include STEM lab using Project Lead the Way programs, green architecture, and magic of electrons. College and career readiness class begins student planning and helps them consider their career pathway as they enter high school. And the Digital Citizenship Program leads the example within Virginia being recognized as a common sense media exemplar program. Students of all academic abilities are provided with resources to ensure success. Personnel specializing in teaching students with special education needs, English language learning needs, and the gifted and talented all work full time at METS to ensure that students maximize their potential. Unique programs such as the Integrated Math Science or IMS program and Integrated Humanities or IH program create specialized learning opportunities for advanced learners. The staff of METS Middle School strives daily to ensure that students that join our community are cared for emotionally, socially, and academically. It is our dream that students grow to be healthy and productive citizens, realizing their own dreams in the future.
And on behalf of all the staff and students at METS, thank you for making every day possible. Thank you, Ms. Buckheit. Um, before Osborne comes, I just want to thank everyone for your patience tonight. I feel that under one roof, we've been able to tell the Manassas City Public School story, you know, from our earliest learners, and now we're getting ready to hear from our high schoolers. I do hope that the students, the younger students that are here, are seeing things that you have to look forward to. And then I also hope that our older students are impressed by the many things that our younger students are learning that maybe you didn't have the opportunity to do when you were that age. So thank you all for being here tonight. At the conclusion of Osborne's presentation, as many students that are still here, I would like for you to stay with us and join us up front for a group photo with our school board members uh, so that we can remember this moment. So at this time, I'm going to ask Osborne to come with their presentation. Good evening, Chairman Williams, members of the board, and Dr. McGork. As a representative of the many student leaders from Osborne High School, I'm Leon Sunga, the president of the Osborne Student Council Association. I am an example of the many students who have received their entire education through Manassas City. My peers and I are excited to celebrate you this evening. My peers. <laughs> All right. So. Manassas City Public Schools is fortunate to have talented and dedicated people leading our schools. You guys, so, all right. So, Mr. Williams, Chairman, eight years of service. <laughs> Mrs. Kiefer, three years of service. Mr. Albrecht, 18 years of service. <laughs> Mr. Demeria, 12 years of service. <laughs> Mr. O'Hanlon, one year of service. Mrs. Seberg, two years of service. <laughs> Mrs. Williams, one year of service. <laughs> and Dr. McGort, five years of service. You generously give of yourself to ensure that decisions directly affecting our schools are made by representatives of our community, people who are close to our schools and know our teachers, parents, and students. In these challenging times, you face difficult choices and shoulder critical responsibilities. Your ultimate goal is always focused on the future success of the children in our city. All right. You have made the time to generously provide this important public service because you care. You care about the schools being the best that they can be. You care about the next generation and the future of our community. You care about advancing opportunities for all. Your hard work, dedication, and commitment of time is truly appreciated and valued. Tonight we have some OHS swag for you. Compliments of the student body at Osborne High School. Your swag includes a t-shirt that reflects OHS's home to all of us in Manassas City, a personalized scrapbook was made reflecting the many aspects of Osborne, our school pride, academics, and after-school activities. As a part of the Chick-fil-A Leader Academy, of course you get some gift cards and homemade baked goods from Jayla and Mickey. <laughs> Finally, a pop socket. It's a must for your phone. All right. All right. 
We have an amazing school and we are so proud to be an Eagle. Thank you for your unwavering service and support for all of us. Are we going to take a picture? All right, cool. Okay, thank you, everyone. Chairman Williams, would you like to say something before they all leave out? Uh, man, I'm speechless. Um, this was awesome and amazing, and I'm sure we'll have comments later. But um, you guys are phenomenal. This is this is great, and this is what Turn your you know. Off. It is. It's on. Oh. Hello, can you hear me? My mic is not working. Oh, there we go. <laughs> thank you. We'll always keep it. I said. Okay. Um, my mic's not working. Um, this was awesome and amazing. Uh, we talk about how great our school system is and how great our kids are, but to actually see it in action is breathtaking. Our kids are doing so much great stuff, and I wish not only everybody who uh, has kids in the system, but folks in our town could see what our kids are doing, because they can see uh, the truly wonderful things we're doing here. And we are help, on behalf of where we can help facilitate that, but our teachers and our principals and our bus drivers and our cafeteria workers do the hard work for our kids, and the kids do the work. So thank you for all your efforts and you guys are just amazing. Thank you. So we need all the other students to come down. She's good. <laughs> Oh, this is what it is. 
together. Keeps going down. in here you know we, I mean we can't top what we just saw it, it was it was amazing um, are there any board committee reports looking no, down the road no sir no reports okay um, on to board member comments uh, mr. Anderson is not here and mr. Morales stepped away for a second so we'll go to miss Seberg um, good evening thanks for that wonderful presentations by all the schools thank you so much um, I did want to say good luck to all the participants in the Miss Osborne pageant, which will be held this Friday at Osborne High School, 7 p.m. This event is held as a fundraiser so the students can help cover some of their costs in the upcoming Skills USA contest. Also, a shout out to Osborne academic team as they head to NBC4 Studios in DC. 
and the set of its academic TV show on Saturday where they're going to be competing in the playoffs. Also, good luck to uh, Team 1895 Lambda Corps. It's the Osborne Robotics team as they start their competitive season. It'll be this weekend at Battlefield High School. And I also wanted to say thank you to my fellow school board members. I appreciate you all as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez Morales. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's actually really wonderful to see all my peers and all the people here for me to reminisce of when I was in actually JD. Uh, it was great to see all the all the events and everything that they do. The closest thing I remember to remembering you know, what we did was like GTN, I don't know if you guys ever heard of it, like Gifted Talent, and, and I was part of that. And it, and it was just similar to this, and now it's really great to see how it's expanded overall. And um, but actually, um, now I was born last Friday, we actually, I just wanted to tell its um, talent show. I don't know if any of you guys were there. I was actually. It was a great experience. I was actually not feeling well that day, and then them just uh, forming their talent kind of was was like they were there for me, only there for me, and it was kind of you know great. But yeah, uh, if you guys missed it this year, hopefully next year you guys can attend. But yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Well, I just want to comment on um, everybody tonight, all the kids. I want to real quick run down the list of what all the students tonight taught me. First. They taught me about community, that our kids are involved in our community and learning how to serve our community. Um, they have activities after school, and you mean they learn outside of school? I wanted to spend a day just like the kids at um, Hayden Elementary School. They look like they had a fun day after watching that video. Um, the STEAM, that cool song choice, are the 80s back? I, I don't know, we'll find out. Um, it's fly to be a fly girl. Um, kids, the kids pay, uh, pay attention to architecture and colors. I thought that was really interesting. Um, maybe I'm not smarter than a fifth grader since all these kids know how to code and I have no idea how to do it. <laughs> um, and then the academies at Mets, I love that they have choices. We didn't have choices when we were in middle school. So I, I, they taught me that they actually have choices. In service, Osborne High School, they told me I had swag. <laughs> anyway, I just want to thank all my board members as well tonight. I'm learning a lot in my first year, and um, okay. now that I'm a little, little not so green in part of committees, I really appreciate the help of others on my board helping me through those, those committees. And that's it. Mr. Thank Mr. you. Thank you. Mr. DeMary. Thank you, sir. Um, not a lot, just overwhelming. Um, <clears throat> This is why we would do what we do. Um, our thankless job is far from it. Uh, and it's just not on nights like this we get to see these kids every day uh, doing the incredible things they do and be, becoming the incredible people they've been becoming. And uh, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed. And uh, it, it, it's, night like, it's night, nights like this that make it fun to come to board meetings celebrate supposedly us, but we're celebrating our kids and it's just wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Albert. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And Mrs. Williams, you got it right. Mr. Baldwin is still in the audience. He talks about, you know, it's about the kids and it really is. And I appreciate that perspective. And Mrs. Bills made the comment, we don't do this in fifth and sixth grade. None of us did it at that age. And she's right to shoot this in college. And I'll show my age. We were doing a computer program with punch cards. It was really cool to get out of your soup. And, and that took like 20 hours to do. So to think what you're doing in the fifth and sixth grade is really, it's remarkable. And I think it puts a great perspective for all of us thinking of where the future is. Uh, I think summing up our, our student leader from Osborne, who really understood where we are with difficult choices and appreciating the fact that we are trying to optimize what's best for all children. There really is the other point of where we're going to be in the next probably month two or three as we finish our budget process. We're also in the point of renegotiating our funding agreement with the city. Um, and while the federal government has finally reached the budget for this year halfway through, the amount of money the federal government is spending on education, the amount of money that the state government is spending on education still isn't back to where it was in 2006. 
we all know that gas and other kind of prices have continued to do, and everybody's putting on the locality. So it's going to be difficult choices to look at our SEA presence, things that the city's going to have to make as we enter those discussions. So thank you to everybody, and especially my fellow peers up here in the board of today. Your community is represented by a very good board, and I appreciate serving with everyone here. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. O'Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just going to echo what everyone else said. I want to uh, thank the students and staff for all the outstanding presentations tonight. And as the uh, newest member of the board, I want to recognize and thank all my fellow board members who have been inspirational and instructional to me as I uh, catch on to what's going on. This week, we honor Dr. Seuss throughout our elementary schools and with various reading programs. So parents, I encourage you to take some time to read to your children. It's good for you and great for the kids. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Ms. Keeper. Thank you. I don't know what more there is to say. I just sit in awe, uh, looking out to that pool of, of just smiling faces. And I was really struck by how articulate these kids are. It's not just, I mean, the academics are a front center of everything that we do, and we've heard about all of the good things going on here. But just, you know, I think about myself as a fourth grader, when I've gotten up and spoken, and the soft skills that they're also learning are to be commended. Um, they're more articulate than I am sitting up here, um, and it's just amazing. Um, I liked seeing that there's such progress being made. I think all of us sit up here and always say we can do, you know, we can do better, we can do better, and everybody works so hard to make sure that's happening. But the progress, just to celebrate it in this moment, but also outside of this moment, is really important. I too like the future is now. Um, I think we should think about that as as we make tough decisions, as we. Uh, look out at what our kids need, every single one of them. Um, they're all different. Um, and I just wanted to say to my colleagues, as well as to everybody in this system, it's an honor and a privilege to serve with each and everybody up here, um, but also to be able to have the uh, honor to serve our kids, their families, our teachers, and everybody else, uh, staff in the community. Um, and I will speak for myself, but I know everybody here well enough to know I'm probably speaking for them too. We remain committed to you and to our kids, and we'll always do the best that we can for them. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I usually keep my comments limited, but they'll be a little longer than usual, uh, but not too long. I know you guys probably won't go home, so not too long. Uh, but thanks again to all the students and staff for the wonderful presentations. Um, we talk about how great our school system is, and um, like I said earlier, I mean, actually seeing it um, shows you and brings to life what they're doing. And I wish everyone could see what, they, what they're doing. So I hope folks who watch this on TV or you know, look at it later when it's you know, on cable or online um, really take time to look at what the kids are doing because it's, it's really phenomenal. Um, other boardrooms have discussed a lot about uh, what happened earlier, so I'm not going to go too far and delve too, too much into that. I'm not going to talk all night about it because, I mean, it's really amazing, especially the coding stuff. That, that, was, that was impressive. Um, but I'm going to have remarks on two topics. The first topic is the recent school shootings in Florida. Um, this is a tragedy that has touched the world and devastated the community. This is just not acceptable in a civilized society. Our school system is thankfully cognizant of the needs of our students, Nathan addressing them, and I thank them for that. And we are doing our best to help them. I urge everyone to search their hearts and do what they can to try and help tragedies like this never happen again. My second topic is a brief discussion about Black History Month, which is celebrated every February, and this is February, obviously. Um, I'll give a brief history. Um, Carter G. Woodson started Negro History Week in 1926. This week was the precursor to Black History Month, which was first celebrated in 1970 and first recognized by the United States government in 1976. The purpose of Black History Month is to celebrate and note the contributions of African Americans to American history. These contributions, ranging from science to medicine and architecture to religion, are important and valuable aspects of American history. These contributions also serve to remind us the value of diversity, in this instance, racial diversity, in our society. Black history covers figures ranging from Crispus Attucks to Matthew Henson, Daniel Hell Williams to Thurgood Marshall, and Shirley Chisholm to Barack Obama, just to name a very brief view. And more recently, from the book and the movie, movie Hidden Figures, to the recent 4x800 world record USA Women's Track Relay Team, to the cultural phenomenon of the movie The Black Panther, black history is inextricably linked to American history. And I have to say, the movie The Black Panther has become a cultural touchstone. I don't know how many of you, you know, are aware of this. 
Um, but it's really, this really touched the nerve of a lot of folks in our society because for the first time they were seeing themselves in a positive light and you can't put a, uh, a value on that. And having a child, I have had people I know, children to grandparents um, who have been really touched by the movie and not necessarily because the movie is so great because it's a superhero movie, but because for the first time they see themselves represented. And if you're not in that position, you may not understand the importance of that, but it's really touched me and surprised me a bit about how important it is. And um, as time goes on, it's gonna become a cultural demarcation, I think, for a lot of folks. So it's something just to, to keep in mind. Malcolm Forbes said, diversity is the art of thinking independently together. The unique, incredible diversity of our nation and our community, whether it be race, gender, socioeconomics, or religion, yields many independent thinkers who come together to make America the nation that it is. I hope that Black History Month serves to remind us of the contributions of African Americans, but also the power of diversity. I will end with these comments I made a few years ago here in, in this diocese. How great would our community be if we decided that when we educate our kids or talk about what's best for our community, we don't denigrate or marginalize any of our citizens or act as if our diversity is a crutch or something holding us back. Rather, we treat it as a strength as we strive to serve our students and our community, as we saw tonight, with one purpose, one heart, one voice, and one mind. Thank you. On to citizens' comments. Are there any citizens here who would like to make a comment? Please sign up. Good evening. And, um, um, have you signed up? I did. Okay, yep. and before you I'm sign up, I have to read this um, brief thing, which I don't have written up, but it's up there on the board. Okay. Um, if you'd like to sign up, please sign in the table. Um, also, and since I don't have to print it out, I think I have to wing this. Um, you're limited to three minutes. Um, a lack of response does not mean that we're not listening to you and don't care about what you're saying, but we are not able to respond to all citizen comments. But we do listen to you and uh, we'll take into account everything that you say. And hopefully that's everything I needed to say. So in three minutes, there you go. And please state your name. Okay. Where you're from. Sure, thank you. Uh, Chairman Williams, Vice Chairman Kiefer, Dr. McGork, board members, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to come tonight. Um, we are the PTO of George C. Round Elementary School. My name is Kelly. My name is Marisol. My name is Mighty Weitzel. And this is? Kathleen. <laughs> uh, we just wanted to come tonight to invite you guys to our 19th annual Shamrock Run, which is um, on March 10th. So it's the weekend after ugh, this one. Um, and um, it starts at 8 o'clock. We're going to have, it's going to be fun. It's a 5K. We also have a one mile fun walk, fun run. Um, you can sign up online or I brought some registration forms for you guys to, to <laughs> sign up for tonight. So uh, we just wanted to welcome you to our Shamrock Run and hope that you come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Are there any other citizens who would like to speak? Seeing or hearing none, I will move on to the consent agenda. May I have a motion, please? Mr. Chair, move the school board to the consent agenda as modified. Second. Motion by Mr. Demaria, second by Mrs. Keeper, that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the consent agenda as modified. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes carry it 7 0. Next, discussion agenda. The first item on the discussion agenda is new business. And the new business is about our superintendent search. And I'm going to read this verbatim so I don't make a mistake. In accordance with the Code of Virginia, Section 2.2-3712, subsection B, the City of Manassas School Board announces that it will be meeting in closed session solely for the purpose of interviewing candidates for the position of Division Superintendent. The closed session will be continued as needed for up to 15 days from the date of this announcement. The closed sessions will occur in an undisclosed location to protect the privacy of the candidates. And that is all we have for the superintendent search. Next up is student services, school start and dismissal time, Mr. Andy Hawkins. Good evening. Uh, several years ago, the bell frames that you see on the screen were established after many studies provided results indicating that high school students should not begin classes until after 8 a.m. At the time these bell frames were established, we stated that if we were unable to return to the four-tier 
uh, transportation system, we would switch the bell frames from time to time to be more equitable so that late arriving and leaving schools could switch to an ear earlier schedule. Therefore, tonight we are proposing flipping the bell frames at Baldwin and Weems with Hayden and Round. Initially, when the new Baldwin School was built, we were concerned about the traffic congestion at the intersection of Eagle Way and Main Streets. Now that Baldwin has been open for over a year, our, our concerns have been proven to be unfounded. We believe that there is enough time in the schedules to make this change without causing any safety concerns in the area. In the future, we recommend that we, we should establish some sort of rotation cycle, like every three years or five years or whatever the board would like. Due to Dean's location and the number of buses involved, it's not practical to switch their bell schedules. So um, do you have any questions, concerns, comments? Comments? I've got comments. I mean, I, I'd appreciate hearing from the community on this. We had a large dialogue when we went to the current bell schedule. I think it's incumbent upon the city, the schools, to figure out what's the right transportation schedule. I have a lot of personal reservations about going into any kind of rotating cycle of the bells every two years, five years, just because of the confusion I think that will cause operationally with parents. This was the starting time last year, now it's this time, in which are we? I, I think we need to solve the problem, and I think going to some kind of rotational thing is putting, everybody knows me, I make really bad analogies, is put lipstick on a pig. Are there other comments? Um, yeah, yes, sir. Um, we, we did have a uh, education support meeting, and we, we went over this. Um, I didn't mention it during the uh, comments because we really didn't come up with a, a recommendation yet because we wanted to hear from the whole, whole board. Um, I am torn because I agree with Mr. Albrecht, but I also know that um, we had indicated that we would rotate from time to time. I agree with Mr. Albrecht that it would be possibly confusing to folks. Um, I think we do need to talk about it more. I, I think uh, you know, hearing from the community more would be better um, before we make any rash decisions. Um, but it, it, I am torn on it. Um, it it's, I, I see the positives and the negatives to doing it. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, um, when do you all, and I am not talking to you as a doctor work, when do you need us to let you know, um, either yes or no, that we should proceed? Well, I, I mean, the earlier the better, I guess. Of course, we notify the parents and get this through our, through our community uh, one way or the other, but I, I would imagine that we would be fine if we could do this by, you know, May the 1st, maybe. I'm just picking that out of the hat, but okay. I'm just okay. suggesting that date. Okay, what I'm suggesting is if staff could go back and get some kind of feedback from the elementary schools involved, um, I know it's going to be a short time frame, um, do that, bring it back to us, we can have a discussion about it, and then vote on whether we would change or not predicate on the information we receive from you all, from uh, the feedback you receive from, from, from folks in the community. Is sure. that doable? Yes, we can do that. Okay. Uh, I, 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 so here, here's the dilemma that we have. Okay. Um, we're on the schedule because um, we don't have the funding to purchase. It would be about two, three point two million dollars to, to put us all in the all the elementary schools on the same schedule. When we survey, it will be just like when we started out with Wings and Baldwin. The Wings and Baldwin people weren't happy, and the other three schools were. So we can do the survey of the parents or the teach or the teachers. I don't I don't know if it's both, and um, neither one will become happy and the other one will become unhappy. With Dean being the only one unaffected because it is um, all buses, so that's not possible. So we can bring that information to you and, and talk with you about it. 
uh, but I, I agree with everything everyone is saying. Um, and at the same time, I understand where the staff are. So it's kind of a predicament. Okay. Well, it seems like we could maybe do this within a month's time frame. So if you get feedback and we get what we think we're going to get, then it's incumbent upon us to look at the information we receive and make a decision. So would it be possible at the next budget work session, or maybe by the next work, budget work session, that the questions that we would you would like to hear are like answers to that we would have some kind of frame of reference? That would be great. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Forget the plan. Thank you. And thank you all for your comments. I appreciate it. Wow, I, I think that we are done. Mr. Chair, so. I move that the school board meeting. Second. <laughs> Motion by Ms. Keeper, second by Mr. Murray, that the school board meeting adjourn. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Going once? Yeah. The ayes have it. 7-0. We're adjourned. Thank you.